Hey, welcome back to Bear's Grid. On this channel, we do simplifying educational tech using the iPad. In today's session, I'm gonna show you whether Google Sheets is any good on the iPad. If you've seen any of my previous videos, I'm a huge proponent to using Safari over the iPadOS apps because the Safari browser is a desktop class browser. Now, first thing first, what we're going to do is jump on to uh, Safari, go to google.com and sign in to your Gmail. Uh, from there, you can go on to the app selector and just go to your drive or go to your sheets. We're going to be dealing with sheets today. So go to your sheets. I'm going to show you some examples using Google Sheets on how powerful it is on the iPad. So let's, I've got this demo sheet here. I'm going to open up this sheet here. The data in this sheet is an extract from an in-class project that some students done. Maybe do a group frequency table and then show you some uh, formulae that you can apply here on Google Sheets on the iPad. So let's start off some basic stuff. We've got information here about 10 people and their weight before and after an exercise, a particular regime that they've done or uh, some supplement, health supplement that they're taking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just find out the some of these uh, statistical averages. So I'm, let's start off with a mean, and that's going to be uh, an average. And then all I need to do is highlight this data and press return. That gives me an average there. The median, again, uh, equals median. I'll press enter, and then I can highlight the data and then press enter again. I don't even need to close um, the bracket. I can just press enter. Mode, mode is going to be just, we're looking for the most common occurring uh, value in this database. Okay, and then count, so equals count. I'm going to be doing a count if in a little bit, so stay tuned for that. Count if is a bit more advanced. It gives uh, some criteria to a count, and I'll show you why we're going to be using that. Minimum, of course, is just min. Uh, open my bracket, select my data, and then press enter. And then finally, the max. And I'll tell you why we need the min and max as well. So max bracket. So that's really straightforward. And what I can do from here, I can actually just drag this little blue corner uh, and copy it across. Okay, and, and, and by doing that, look, if I highlight this, you can see that it's selected the appropriate data. It's moved over the cell reference. Um, so let's just copy this over. Mode, you think that there's an error here. Actually, there's no error. There just isn't a mode in this data. Okay, mode cannot produce a result. There's no value occurring more than once. So it gives you a little snapshot of what's going on. Other, you know, otherwise you might be thinking, hey, what have I done wrong? It gives you the little annotation as to what's gone on there. Okay, make sure you grab this little handle here, the little blue uh, corner. You can do this with your pencil as well, or you can do it with your finger. Okay, there we go. So we've got all the basic uh, statistical averages there. The example is irrelevant, but what it does show you is how well Google Sheets works on the iPad. In fact, it works as good as it does on any desktop browser because Safari is a desktop class browser. So if that's enough for you to take my word for it, it's pretty good. Uh, if you want to see some uh, statistical averages and me working on this sheet, then carry on watching and I'll show you exactly what we're going to be doing here. So here's the next function I'm going to show you is concatenate. And what we're going to do is we're going to string some items together. Like, for example, Sally ate pizza. If we had those three separate words, we can string them together to make a sentence. So the same way, I'm going to make a mathematical sentence stringing uh, the upper and lower bounds together. So I can write equals and con. And then it should bring up concatenate. And what concatenate does, it appends strings to one another. Okay, So it will bring it together. So the first string is this one here. And I want to say is greater or equal to but less than, and close this by putting in the upper bound. Okay, so now this is concatenated it. It says 110. I want to put a space here because I don't like how it looks. So what I can do is I can just put space between um, my speech marks. And now it says 110, greater or equal to, and then less than 130. And I could just copy and paste this all the way down. And then that will give me my class interval for this table. Okay, the whole benefit of using Google Sheets is to try to automate things. Okay, so I want to what I want to do in the tally. I want to have two conditions. I want to find out if this data, okay, is between one ten to one thirty, and then tally it here, and then count the data again. If it's between one thirty to one fifty, count it here. So how can we automate that tally mark? We're going to use count ifs. Okay, so equals count, and we're going to use count ifs. Count ifs um, counts values depending on multiple criteria. Okay, let's just take the data here. And now, what's our first condition? Our first condition is the lower boundary, okay? So we're saying, remember you have to do your speech bubbles here. We're saying it's greater or equal to 110. And let's close that. 
and then this class again this class and then our second condition is that it's less than 130 let's close that out and press enter that gives us the count between that data now what I want to do is I want to copy and paste that into the different uh, cells here so I want to go back to this and I want to give absolute cell reference can you give absolute cell reference let's check okay so this is if I put these um, dollar signs here I'm giving it absolute cell reference that way it's not going to change the range of my data now that I've done complete cell reference let's see does that actually work in the iPad version of Google Sheets so I'm going to copy and paste this across okay of course there's nothing here because I need to change this range this is from 130 to 150 so if I go in here bear with me and change this to 130 to 150 go here and do that to 150 you can see I've got a count of one I can go here and I can see it's 150 to 170 and you can see that as I've copied this across the cell reference okay the absolute cell reference for the data does work by putting dollar signs in okay so anyway let me finish this off so just to make sure that the total is correct I can just do a very quick sum uh, and sum these values here and this should give me 10 which is the same count that I've got here for the data so charts can be added in the same usual way that you would add them in on the desktop browser version what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you one last thing just to show you the power of using uh, um, the Safari browser here is I can add I'm going to go quickly here and I'm going to add a drawing here I'm going to insert a drawing you'll see why I'm doing this yeah so I'm going to make a button I'm going to say plus one so let's just drag the one into here and I'm going to save and close so what I'm going to do is I'm going to code that button so that it adds one to a cell whenever I click on it so what I'm going to do is this I'm going to go to tools and I'm going to go to edit uh, script editor and then here I've added some code uh, for it to add one you can pause the screen here take a screenshot if you like this is going to add one to um, any cell that I click on so uh, I can run this and this is going to uh, allow me to run this function is called plus one so all I need to do here is right click this go to the three dots and assign a script the script is plus one okay now in any cell that I click on and I click this button it will run the code and it will plus one so if I am doing a tally and I didn't want to do any of this stuff here I could just keep pressing one and now you could code this button to say plus two each time plus ten plus hundred each time whatever the value is okay you can run script you can run code on Google Sheets on the iPad through the Safari web browser that's how powerful this is of course you can run here you can go to tools you can uh, run macros you can record macros you can use pivot tables a Google Sheets on the iPad is no different than using it on any computer or desktop. It is very powerful. So maybe do consider, um, you know, Google Sheets on the iPad. It runs perfectly without skipping a heartbeat. If you found that video helpful, then give me a thumbs up. Please uh, consider subscribing and turn on notifications. Check out my other videos that I've done on the, uh, on the G Suite and also on the Microsoft Office uh, that I've done. I'll be popping out a lot more videos. Um, so until then, I'll see you in the next one.